A giant in the music and entertainment industry has died. Quincy Jones was revered as a record producer, songwriter, composer, arranger, and performer throughout his seven decades in the business. The relationship is like, you know, it's like blood now. It's like she's the same age as my daughter. I just saw her last week in the Santa Barbara. No, that, that's a, that's a, a, as serious a bond as you've ever seen. Being around uh, Steven Spielberg and Quincy Jones and Alice Walker every day. It's in three words is that there was i had no better f quincy jones a titan of american entertainment who worked with stars from frank sinatra to michael jackson and will smith has died at the age of 91. but despite passing on at an advanced age some people can't help but link his death to sean diddy combs ongoing miseries and one of those people is allegedly one of quincy's closest friends for years oprah winfrey Quincy Jones was going through Chicago, saw my talk show, and said, I think that would make a good Sophia. And I screen tested for it. She was Sophie. And, and she delivered, too. She delivered. She had Sophie, Sophie's persona, and it came straight through. As it turns out, Quincy saw Diddy's unbecoming behavior and reportedly warned several people about the rapper. The legendary music producer saw through Diddy more than a decade ago, as revealed in his scathing review of the rapper's musical abilities in 2012. Quincy didn't fall for Diddy's bravado and was not afraid of expressing it either. The music titan slammed Diddy at a Spotify launch event during a conversation with Bruno Mars and audience members in June 2012, saying the R accused rapper wouldn't know a B flat if it hit him. As they say, the rain in Spain is mainly on the plains. Well, I pop a free solar, honey. Instead, according to Quincy, Diddy had a doctorate in marketing. He's got clothes companies and Ciroc Vodka, while adding that artists should learn your craft. When the producer's comments about Diddy blew up at the time, he shared a Facebook post to say he didn't mean any ill feelings toward the rapper. No controversy, no diss. I have nothing but love and respect for Diddy and all that he has achieved as an artist and an executive. Always have and always will, he wrote. So, was that the first time Diddy threw him? Quincy's final Instagram post wished his daughter Martina Tina a happy birthday and featured a photograph of the two smiling together. It said, happy birthday to my Tina Bina, so proud to be your papa, big hug, I love you eternally. Meanwhile, Diddy is spending his 55th birthday behind bars at the Brooklyn Metropolitan Detention Center. The rapper, who is awaiting trial on federal s train and racketeering charges, is also due in federal court later during the month. The New York Post reports that Diddy was given a choice of cheese pizza, salad, or pasta for lunch on his birthday. That's what's on the menu at the prison where Fed seized drugs and phones recently as part of a multi-agency operation that they insist is not tied to his high profile case. Diddy, whose real name is Sean Combs, insists he is wrongfully accused. He maintains that while sorted, the F-off parties that prosecutors want to send him down for were all consensual. Dozens of women have come forward to insist that was not the case, and Quincy, a certified industry goat, sure knows a thing or two about Diddy parties. Jones's publicist, Arnold Robinson, said he died on Sunday night at his home in the Bel Air section of Los Angeles, surrounded by his family. Tonight, with full but broken hearts, we must share the news of our father and brother, Quincy Jones, passing, the family said in a statement. And although this is an incredible loss for our family, we celebrate the great life that he lived and know there will never be another like him. Having been in the industry for well over seven decades, way even before Diddy was born, Quincy harbors a lot of information on what happened in and around Hollywood. And some quarters now believe the information he had on the bad boy founder may have fastened his demise, thanks to Puffy's scrupulous means of allegedly poisoning enemies. Jones was arguably the most versatile pop cultural figure of the 20th century perhaps best known for producing the albums Off the Wall, Thriller, and Bad for Michael Jackson in the 1980s, which made the singer the biggest pop star of all time. 
Jones also produced music for Sinatra, Aretha Franklin, Donna Summer, and many others. I had met him when he was 12 at Sammy's house about, when he was about 12 years old. But he's, I guess he's 19 or 20 now. And uh, he said... Uh, he was also a successful composer of dozens of film scores and had numerous chart hits under his own name. But that's not all. Jones was a band leader in big band jazz and a ranger for jazz stars, including Count Basie and a multi-instrumentalist, most proficiently on trumpet and piano. His TV and film production company, founded in 1990, had major success with the sitcom The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and other shows, and he continued to innovate well into his 80s, launching Quest TV in 2017, an on-demand music TV service. The musician is third only to Beyonce and Jay-Z for having the most Grammy Award nominations of all time, 80 to their 88 each, and is the award's third most garlanded winner with 28. Goes to We Are The World, Quincy Jones, producer. Among those paying tribute to Jones was Joe Biden, who called him a musical genius who transformed the soul of America one beat, one rhythm, and one rhyme at a time. Quincy Jones solidified black culture as American culture. Jones was born in Chicago. His half-white father had been born to a Welsh slave owner and one of his female slaves, while his mother's family was also descended from slave owners. His introduction to music came through the walls of his childhood home from a piano played by a neighbor, which he started learning age seven and via his mother's singing. Right now for us to unofficially enlist Dire Straits and Don Henley into USA for Africa, that would make the whole category win. His parents divorced and he moved with his father to Washington State, where Quincy learned drums and a host of brass instruments in his high school band. At 14, he started playing in a band with 16-year-old Ray Charles in Seattle clubs, once in 1948, backing Billie Holiday. He studied music at Seattle University, transferring east to continue in Boston, and then moved to New York after being rehired by the jazz band leader Lionel Hampton, with whom he had toured as a high schooler, a band for which Malcolm X was a hair killer when they played in Detroit. Years to get all of the negative thoughts out of my body. Grudges, no more anger. It's a waste of time. In New York, one early gig was playing trumpet in Elvis Presley's band for his first TV appearances, and he met the stars of the flourishing bebop movement, including Charlie Parker and Miles Davis. Years later in 1991, Quincy conducted Davis's last performance, two months before he died. Quincy toured Europe with Hampton and spent much time there in the 1950s, including a period furthering his studies in Paris, where he met luminaries including Pablo Picasso, James Baldwin, and Josephine Baker. At the age of 23, he also toured South America and the Middle East as Dizzy Gillespie's musical director and arranger. He convened a crack team for his own big band, touring Europe as a way to test Free and Easy, a jazz musical, but the disastrous run left Jones, by his own admission, close to S side and with $100,000 in debt. He secured a job at Mercury Records and slowly paid off the debt with plenty of work as a producer and arranger for artists including Ella Fitzgerald, Dinah Washington, Peggy Lee, Sarah Vaughn, and Sammy Davis Jr. He also began scoring films, his credits eventually including The Italian Job, In the Heat of the Night, The Getaway, and The Color Purple. He produced the last of these, which was nominated for 11 Oscars, three for Jones himself. In 1968, he became the first African-American to be nominated for Best Original Song at the Oscars for The Eyes of Love from the film Banning, alongside songwriter Bob Russell. He had seven nominations in total. For TV, he scored programs such as The Bill Cosby Show, Ironside, and Roots. His work with Sinatra began in 1958 when he was hired to conduct and arrange for Sinatra and his band by Grace Kelly Princess Consort of Monaco for a charity event. Jones and Sinatra continued working on projects until Sinatra's final album, Louisiana Is My Lady, in 1984. The producer's solo musical career took off in the late 1950s, recording albums under his own name as band leader 
for jazz ensembles that included luminaries such as Charles Mingus, Art Pepper, and Freddie Hubbard. One year, Sinatra stopped all the racism in Vegas. And he told the guys that if anybody even looks at one of the band members funny, break both <laughs> Jones once said of his time in Seattle, when people write about the music, jazz is in this box, R&B is in this box, pop is in this box, but we did everything. And his Catholic taste served him well as modern pop mutated out of the swing era. He produced four million selling hits for the the New York singer Leslie Gore in the mid 60s, including the US number one, It's My Party, and later embraced funk and disco, producing hit singles including George Benson's Give Me the Night and Patty Austin and James Ingram's Baby Come to Me, along with records by the band Rufus and Chaka Khan and the Brothers Johnson. Quincy also released his own funk material, scoring US top 10 albums with Body Heat in 1974 and The Dude in 1981. His biggest success in the style was his work with Michael Jackson. Thriller remains the biggest selling album of all time, while Jones's versatility between off the wall and bad allowed MJ to metamorphose from lithe disco to ultra synthetic funk rock. E.T., the extraterrestrial Michael Jackson, Quincy Jones, album producer. He and Jackson, along with Lionel Richie and producer Michael O'Martian, also helmed We Are The World, a successful charity single that raised funds for famine relief in Ethiopia in 1985. I've lost my little brother today and part of my soul has gone with him, Quincy said when Jackson died in 2009. In 2017, his legal team successfully argued that he was owed $9.4 million in unpaid Jackson royalties, though he lost on appeal in 2020 and had to return $6.8 million. After the success of The Color Purple in 1985, he formed the film and TV production company Quincy Jones Entertainment in 1990. His biggest screen hit was the sitcom The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which ran for 148 episodes and launched the career of Will Smith. Other shows included the LL Cool J sitcom In the House and the long running sketch comedy show Mad TV. They're gonna see, when they see Will, they're gonna see a beautiful performer uh, uh, um, with a maturity that, that, that's far beyond his age. He also created the media company Quest Broadcasting. And in 1993, the black music magazine Vibe in partnership with Time Inc. Throughout his career, he supported numerous charities and causes, including the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the Jazz Foundation of America and others, and mentored young musicians, including the British multiple Grammy winner, Jacob Collier. He had a very close relationship with media mogul, Oprah Winfrey. As it is told, Quincy was the first person Oprah Winfrey loved unconditionally. Following his death, Oprah has now taken to Instagram to express her sorrow, admitting that her life changed forever for the better after meeting him. Oprah wrote on the photo sharing platform, my beloved Q, the world's beloved Q, the one and only Quincy Jones discovered me for the Color Purple movie in 1985. She added, my life changed forever for the better after meeting him. I had never experienced nor have since anyone whose heart was so filled with love. He walked around with his heart wide open and he treated everybody as if they were the most important person he'd ever met. He was the light, no shadows. He was love lived out loud in human form. And he was the first person I ever loved unconditionally. That's how we signed all our notes to each other, unconditionally. Oprah's post featured a throwback photo of herself and Quincy at his home in Bel Air in 2001 when she interviewed him about his prolific career, the family that completed him, and the life he still had ahead. Oprah added, he was the mightiest of souls. His life enhanced mine and every life he touched. That will be his global legacy. Biggest, fullest, most love-filled life ever. One of one, Meanwhile, Whoopi Goldberg has admitted that she had no better friend than Quincy. The actress, who also worked with Quincy on The Color Purple, the 1985 movie that marked his debut as a film producer, said on The View, 
I had no better friend. He never left when other people were flocking away. Q stayed and he always told me to stand my ground. I do and always will. And what I can tell you is in three words is that there was, I had no better friend. Mm -hmm. He never left. When other people were flocking away, Q stayed. And Quincy's illustrious career was twice nearly cut short. He narrowly avoided being K by Charles Manson's cult in 1969, having planned to go to Sharon Tate's house on the night of the M there, but the legendary producer forgot the appointment. He also survived a brain aneurysm in 1974 that prevented him from playing the trumpet again in case the exertion caused further harm. Jones was married three times, first to his high school girlfriend, Jerry Caldwell, for nine years until 1966, fathering his daughter, Jolie. In 1967, he married Ulla Anderson and had a son and daughter, divorcing in 1974 to marry actor Peggy Lipton, best known for roles in The Mod Squad and Twin Peaks. They had two daughters, including the actor Rashida Jones, before divorcing in 1989. He had two further children, Rachel with a dancer, Carol Reynolds, and Kenya, his daughter with actor Nastasha Kinski. He never remarried, but continued to date a string of younger women, raising eyebrows with his year-long partnership with 19-year-old Egyptian designer Heba Elowadi when he was 73. He has also claimed to have dated Ivanka Trump and Juliet Greco. He is survived by his seven children. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.